Tut put Juma Khabiru to Thabitha and Sihro. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min siyyat a'malina min yahdi allahu fala mudallala wa min yu'lil fala hadiya la wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahduhu la shibika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ittaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tumutun illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayyuhal nasi attaqu abbakum alladhi khalakakum min nafsum wahidan wa khalaka minha zawjaha batha minhuma rijalin kathir wa nisa'a wa attaqu allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله تبارك وتعالى وخير هدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وَالشَّرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْتَثَاتُهَا وَكُلُّ مُحْتَثَةٍ بِدْعًا وَكُلُّ بِلَعْتٍ ضَلَالًا وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek His help, we seek His assistance, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within all of ourselves and from the bad consequences of all of our bad deeds. Whom so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to the straight path of Islam then none can misguide him after that. And whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to be misguided, then none will find for himself a guide except by the will, permission of Allah. I bear witness, I bear open testimony. There's no deity that has the right to be worshipped. There is no creator of the heavens and the earth besides Allah. There is no one that deserves to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone in his names, his attributes. He is alone in his lordship, his dominion. He is alone in that which he demands and that which we dispatch to him as actions of worship, pleasure, and obedience. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last of the prophets and messengers, the seal of all of them, the servant and the messenger of Allah. After this, O you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep your duty to him and don't die except as in a state of obedience. O oh, mankind, for your Lord has created all of you from a single soul. And from that single soul, he has created from him his mate, meaning Adam and his wife Eve. And from them, countless many men and women. And for your Lord, that same Lord who you demand your rights over one another, who has told you what your rights are, and don't cut off the relationship with the kith and kin. Don't cut off the relationship with the family members those who are far and distant, because indeed Allah will hold you accountable for he's a watcher over you. All you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speak the truth. Say that which is correct in the time that is correct in order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from your deeds and forgive you of your sins. For whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, they have achieved the greatest of achievements in this life. Verily, after this, to proceed the most truthful speech, the best narrative, is the book of Allah, the Quran, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Arabic language and the finest guidance, finest example, finest way, finest one to copy, emulate is the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from all of the evil affairs, from amongst the worst of them is the innovation that is to introduce something in the religion that has not been brought by the Messenger after he has completed it. For every newly invented matter is an innovation, and every innovation will lead you astray, and every astray will lead that person in the fire. Wa nas'alallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala an ya'inana ala hadhihi dunya, wa an ya'inana wa an ya'inana man adhab anna ameen. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in this daily, daily struggle, in this wicked life, and to save us, protect us from the fire. We are with the series of the major sins from the book of Imam Al-Shamsuddin, who is Imam al-Dahabi, rahimahullahu ta'ala, 
a kibirutu thalitha asihru. The third major sin that Imam Dhahabi brought in his book explaining what are major sins, sihru. Loosely translated as magic. And it has different meanings and we will inshallah ta'ala see that as we go on. Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala he mentioned in his noble book subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يَعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرُ But rather, the devils they disbelieve, teaching people magic. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 102, after he defended Sulaiman saying, وَاتَّبُوا مَا تَأْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينَ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ وَمَا كَفَرُوا سُلَيْمَانِ And Sulaiman, Solomon, the son of Dawood alayhi salam, the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not disbelieve. Rather, the devils disbelieve. How did they disbelieve? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they disbelieve by teaching the people magic. Teaching the magic. And Imam al Dahabi, he explains. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then we'll go back and make this clear, also talked about in reference to magic, that which is in relations to the two angels. Fi qawlihi subhanahu wa ta'ala, lamma dhakra harut wa ma'rut, wa la yu'allimana min ahadin, hatta yukula innama nahnu fitnatun fala takfur. They taught people magic. Allah sent two angels, Harut wa Marut, to instruct and teach the people about this issue. But they told the people from Jump Street, we are teaching you, so do not disbelieve. We are teaching you as a test, as a trial, so do not disbelieve. What is meant by the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, Wala kinna shayateena kafru ya'limuna nasa sir? And the devils disbelieve by teaching the people magic. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means and intends when he talked about the opposite, the two angels that Allah said about them in general, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم They don't disobey Allah when Allah tells them. وَيَأْمَرُونَ وَيَأْمَرُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ وَيَفْعَلُونَ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ نعم. But they do what Allah commanded them. This is the angels. So here... On the first hand, let's talk about the angels. Allah sent Harut wa Marut to teach magic. Why did they teach magic if magic is haram? As Imam al Dhahabi is bringing it as the third major sin that he wants to bring and benefit the Ummah with. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught good and bad, just as he has created good and bad. But when you talk about the issue of the shayateen, then the only reason that the devils teach magic, the only reason, al-maqsood lahum, bi ta'lim al-nas al-sihr, li yushfiku billahi azza wa jinn. They only teach magic, the devils, so that people can make shirk with Allah. And why is this? Because in magic itself, the devils have mixed with that which they teach of magic, association of partners with Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala. And we'll explain. Unlike the angels, they only teach it to the people as a test. For example, the ulama have mentioned the issue of magic in three categories. The first category, annahu haram and la yajuz, that it is haram, it is prohibited. To learn it, to study it, to use it, haram. The second category, and the whole, you Jews, it is permissible to study it, but to study it only to know about its evils. To study it, to know about its evils. To study it in order to take precaution against it. And this type of learning it does not entail that you do disbelief or that you do acts of shirk 
to Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala like when the devils taught and teach the people magic. And the third one, Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala mentioned that it is shirk. Shirk, yani to learn it. And that is the one that the devils teach. They mix shirk with the issue of magic. We will explain, inshallah ta'ala, from the statements of Imam al Dhahabi himself. He said, the reason that the shirk is uh, that the magic is haram, and when we say sihru in Arabic, they translate it as magic. Sometimes they make it black or white magic. Black magic meaning it's bad. White magic meaning it's good. Black magic meaning don't go near it. And white magic meaning if someone is afflicted with the black magic, then you can learn and take white magic to remove the black magic. Know that this is a misconception and this is kedab wa buhtan. There is no such thing as a black and white magic. Sihron magic is magic. Whether it's black, white, green, orange, whatever you want to call it, all of it is haram. You cannot remove an omen or a spell with a spell. You cannot remove black magic with black magic. You cannot remove black magic with so-called, this magic is okay just to remove magic from a person, which they named that white magic. You cannot use voodoo as another word in another language for black magic to remove voodoo. And there are different types of magic. Imam al dahabi he mentions about this magic, why it is evil. And then he talks about the issue of shaitan. He says a shaitan, when al tabaraku wa ta'ala mentioned the devils disbelieve, this means they are going to um, sell you a false promise. They will find out what is it that you desire in the life. Or you heartbroken, or you poor, or you sick, or you afraid. Many of the things that people suffer. You go to the individual, and this person is with the jinn. He has a contract. He or she has a relationship where he talks and he communicates with the jinn, which we have been prohibited to learn what their statements are, to learn their language, to learn their writings, to learn their different ways in order to communicate with them. We have been prohibited. But people cross over. Why? Because some of these affairs, they use the jinn, which you and I can't see, which they have many powers. They use them to achieve what they want to achieve. And when you talk about the word sihru, sihru basically means a deception, a false promise. So when people have been plagued with what we understand to be magic, that person sells you a dream. And there are many of them. We will go over some of them. Then, in order for you to get that dream fulfilled, he requests this. She requests this. They request from you to do something. Out of desperation for what you want, then you take that which they gave you and they disguise what they want to give you with kufr, disbelief on Allah wa ta'ala, and shirk. And this is why Imam al Dahabi he mentioned a sihru la budmin al kufr. There is no escape if people deal with magic, except that you're going to have to disbelieve in Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala. This is part of it. And that the shaitan say, Garabin, ta'lim al nasa sihr. You shrika bihi. One of the goals, one of the aims, one of the designs of the devil teaching the people magic is to get them to commit the big sin, shirk with Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala. And for this reason, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi ma tafaqa alayhi shaykhan, in the Bukhari and Muslim, he mentioned, ijtanibu as-sab'u ma biqat. And we keep hearing this hadith over and over. Avoid the seven daily sins. Wa dhakra minha as And he mentioned from those seven daily Magic. And there's a statement, Ruya Anhu alayhi salatu wa salam, this attributed to the Prophet, where he said, Hattu sahri, darbahu bisayf. 
that the punishment for the one who involves himself in magic of any form, darbahu be safe. Darbahu, strike him. Be safe with the sword, meaning he should be killed. And Imam al Dahabi said, but the reality, the Prophet didn't say this. This is one of the statements of the Sahaba. Bajala ibn Abdullah, one of the Salaf from the Itibad Tabi'een or the Tabi'een, the followers and the students of the Sahaba. He said, Atana Kitab Umari, meaning Umar ibn al Khattab. That there was a book that we received that was written by Umar. Qabla mawtihi bi sanatin. One year before he died. In that book, Umar, he said, An, an, an qatlu amadam, an qatlu kul sahirin wa sahiratin. Kul sahirin wa sahiratin. Or kama qal. In that book, he wrote instructions leaving for the people during his lifetime and for the Muslims after he died. He said that every male and female magician, poet, magic person should be killed. And some of the scholars have mentioned that Umar didn't mention the feminine virgin. He just said, Kul Sahir, every male magician. Because there's a discussion where the woman should be killed even when they apostate. Because of the rule of thumb that you don't kill women. Although some have said if it's mentioned in general, then it includes women. The point here is they should be killed. And the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned the hadith of Imam Tirmidhi and others. He said, Talatatun, la yadkhuluna jannah. There are three that won't enter the jannah. Midminu khamrin, the one who's addicted to alcohol, liquors. And this includes the, the modern day scholars. They mention those who are addicted to narcotics as well. Because the Sahaba kana yara mitmin and khamr yani ya'addid shirk because they used to see the equivalence of a person addicted to liquor the equivalent of shirk. Because you would do anything to fulfill that desire you will obey and follow any whims in order to satisfy that addiction. And this is the type of worship, this is the type of devotion that the servant should have towards his Lord. That there's no restrictions, that he will do anything to please Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala up and beyond that which the normal people don't do. So Sahaba, they understood this to be the addiction of hammer, intoxicants, of liquor. To be equal to shirk. Therefore, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned from the three that won't enter the Jannah, mit min khamrin, one who's addicted to intoxicants. Then he mentioned, alayhi salatu wa salam, al khatu rahman, the one who breaks the family ties. He cuts off his family, he doesn't communicate with them. And many of the scholars of an Islam that have mentioned, Keeping family ties is not if they communicate with you, you communicate with them. La wallah. Never. I swear by Allah. But rather, what is keeping family ties? Keeping relations. Even when they don't keep relations with you. Naam. So the Prophet certainly, he mentioned the second of the three that won't enter the Jannah. The one who cuts the family ties. Then he mentioned thirdly, which is the highlight, the point of the hadith. Al-Mutasaddiqun bisahir, the one who believes the magician. وَقَدْ ذَكْرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فِي حَدِيثٍ صَحِيحٍ مَنَ تَعَالَى الْكَحَانِ وَصَدِّقُوا بِمَا يَقُولُونَ مَنْ أَتَعَالَى الْكَحَانِ وَسُئِلَ وَصَدِّقُوا بِمَا يَقُولُونَ فَقَدْ كَفَرُوا بِمَا أُنْزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ Whoever goes to the magician, be it as the people of astrology, those people that Ibrahim was sent to, they were worshiping the astrology, be it the people of Oham, the tarot card, or the palm reader. 
بيه يعني ماذا أصحاب استخدم الروح الأرضية الجن وهم فلاسفة وذا بي the philosophers which these are types of sihr to be in astrology magic because it gives you a false promise I'm sad my boyfriend left me 20 years ago I'm heartbroken I'm poor I will never have a career then they look at your palm and they tell you no There's a person riding right now on a white horse. You will meet him and he will mend that broken heart. But none knows the unseen. None knows the future except Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Therefore, this part makes it shirk. And it's magic because it's a deception. This is the issue of magic. To make a delusion. To make something appear or seem real that's not real. This is the whole issue of magic. To make that which is normal, abnormal. By way of evil statements. By way of statements that have to do with shirk, disbelief, and partners, and disrespect to Allah. And evil omens. As they said, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. Kadabu. They have lied. So here when you talk about the people of astrology. Prophet said whoever goes to them. He asked them, and they believe in what they told them. Then he, indeed, he has disbelieved in what has been sent to the Prophet. What was sent to the Messenger? Al Quran. What was sent to the Messenger? Al Wahi, revelation. What was sent to the Messenger? A Sunnah. What was sent that which Al Tabarak wa Ta'ala gave to the Messenger? The way to Jannah. You have disbelieved if you go to them and you ask them and you believe what they say. As the Prophet mentioned this, as the third one that won't enter the Jannah. And the Prophet also mentioned, أَقَلْ شَيْءٍ That which is the least of the affair. Whoever goes to him, but he doesn't ask them. Whoever goes to them, he's just curious. Whoever goes with them, I'm going because my girlfriend is going, but I'm just watching. I'm sitting in the chair. Just going to them. The Prophet said, your salat is not accepted. Why, you still have to make that salat. Why, you still have to keep that covenant with Allah. Five times a day, it is not accepted by Allah just because you went to the magician. From amongst some of the types, as al Hafid Mahmoud ibn Ahmed al aynani He mentioned in his book, his famous book, Umdut al-Qari, which is one of the explanations of Sahih al-Bukhari, he mentioned some types of magic. From amongst the first ones, he mentioned Ashaba Kaukaba, those who used to worship the astrology, the planets, and the different things out in the space. And he mentioned they used to believe that these things, Wallahu Musta'an, they either bring about good or bad. This planet, Jupiter, or that Mars, or this star, this galaxy, brings about this. Or by this star, this is going to happen. Or by this planet, this is why you have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all of these paganistic days of the week that come from the Roman and the Greeks that we use every day. And we don't understand, it's better to say, as the Muslims have said, Yawm al, Yawm al Jumu ah, the day of gathering. Mush Friday, not Friday. Or Yawm al Sept, the sixth day of the week. Not Saturday, for the worship of Saturn. Or Hakada Yawm Ahad, the first day of the week. Not Sunday, the day they worship the sun. Or Hakada Yawm Ithnain, the second day of the week. Not Monday, where they drop one of the O's, which was moon day, worshiping the moon, and on and on and on. Worshiping the Kokaba, those of the astrologers. And these were the people of Ibrahim, by the way. The second type the Sheikh he mentioned, those palm readers. Palm readers, look at your palm and tell you about yourself and give you some false hope or some type of speculation. What might be down the road for you? Who knows the future? Who knows what tomorrow will bring? لا يعلم غيب الله None knows the unseen. And this includes the future. Except Allah Taala for who is shirk. And this is shirk. 
And they give you that false perception. They deceive you by mixing some of your past that they know from the gens that give them information. And then they mix that little bit of truth with a bunch of falsehood. And they deceive you. And this is why it is called sihru magic. The third type from amongst the types we want to mention. That which has to do with the issue of the philosophers. Many of the philosophers during the time of the early Muslims, it was clear unanimously that they were people of shirk. Like the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah, and Ibn Qudama, Imam Ibn Qudama al Maqtusi, and the time of Abi Hanifa, wa Qadalik Imam al Shafi'i, wa Imam Ahmed, wa Ghairi. All of these great pioneers of Islam, from the scholars of Islam, they had to refute. And they had to deal with the misconceptions and the poison that the philosophers spread amongst the Muslims. Because there is no way that you're going to be a real philosopher except that you have to be involved in sihr. And there is no way that you will be involved in magic except that you will have your portion in disbelief and shirk with Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala. From amongst the types, barakallahu fikum, that the ulama have mentioned the sihru, sihru al-iyun. That which is the sihr of the eye. And remember, we're talking about deception. So some of it entails dealing with the other side of the world, the jinn world, the spirits and spooks as they call it, which are live creatures. Then others don't include that, but it's still magic because it's deception. Like the three-card molly guy on the bus, moving the cards quick and telling you, okay, pick which one. Do you flip the middle card and nothing's under it, but you thought it was under there because of the issue of the eye and you lose your money. This is a type of sihr. And like the time of Fir'aun, when they would throw their cables and when the sun would hit these cables that were full of mercury, which the sun would allow them to look as if they're moving like snakes. The onlookers would think these were snakes, or rather it was a deception of the eye. وَحَكَدَ بَابَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ Naam. Like in our society and other societies, when you go to the circus and they have the different tricks that looks like, wow, this is magic. He was in the box. They opened the box. He's gone. They saw it in half. He's not there. Then they put another box and open it. He's there. Trap doors and etc. The issue of the eye being deceived by the quickness of speed, deceiving the people by the deception of the eye. And from amongst the types of sihr, Naam, Zazakum Allahu Khaira, may Allah bless you, wa hafidhakum jami'an, and protect all of you, as these are real issues, that no doubt about it, these are real issues. Putting it, yani, as they say, in the ta'am, wa putting it in the different foods and drinks, as some of these magics, and spells have to do with food, different herbs, different types of um, things that if you cook it and you mix it with this herb, you get this type of omen, you get this type of potion, you get this type of person that is hypnotized or some type of effect. And an issue that has very much reverence to where we live, the issue of alcohol. Many of the times when people are doing magic, they're using whiskey and wine and corn whiskey and gin. As it's not a coincidence that they call it gin. Allahu musta'an. And also, wa barakallahu fikum from the issues of sihru, naam, of deception. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, ma'adha ba'd al-bayan min al-sihr. Some people's speech is considered to be sihr. Like we say, it has the gift, the gift of gab. He can fool the people. He can bring a presentation where it appears to be the truth when it's the farthest from the truth. Wahakada. And some of the scholars have mentioned likewise, as Sa'ib bin Namima, the one who spreads what he hears. We say tells, tabloids. He said, she said, that type of person that spreading around what he heard, what she heard, is called sihr also. It's a type of magic because it makes the people look at an individual with an eye that is evil, opposite to the reality of the reputation of that person when you are talking about the affairs of the people. And there are many different types, as the ulama have mentioned, just some of them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that which is from the third major sin in Imam al-Dhahabi's book, As-Sihru, Aqulli Qawli Hadha, Wa Astaghfirli Wa Alaikum. 
من كل ذنبه انه غفور رحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على رسوله ولا نبي بعد نعم ثم ما بعد after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send the salutation upon his prophet for naam indeed certainly yes as-sihru haram bi ijma' wa kitab wa sunnah the issue of sihr magic in all of the manifestations that we mention and more prohibited the only way that a person can learn like we're teaching now so that the Muslims can protect themselves from it. Some of the ways, Wallahu Musta'an, of the Muslims have become this. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the issue. And that is that people have been taught by this magic, how to separate a man from his wife. How to cause divorce. And we're not talking about when people don't get along. Or when people don't see yani, eye to eye so much, it's unbearable or impossible to live under the same roof. We're not talking about cultural differences or racial differences that, somebody, that sometimes, pardon me, that sometimes demand separation. We're talking about situations that are wholesome, situations that are compatible. Situations that are highly workable, situations that are full of joy, bliss, and the remembrance of Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala. But someone is jealous that that girl wasn't married to so and so. Or someone is jealous at why I could not have had him. Or some cultural people from back home don't like the fact that this one migrated from their country to America or Great Britain and married a local rather than their people. So they go and they start to use this issue of magic where they seek assistance from the jinn. And they go to those people. Some of them disguise themselves as sheikh. You think he's a learned man. And the, the, the talk of the town is if you go to him, he has the answer for your problem. So you go and he tells you, after he listens to you, take this, don't open it, just put it under your pillow, you'll be okay. Anyone who ever tells you that, don't take it from him, for verily he's a magician. If you go to a person, you want advice, you need help. He needs to know your name. He doesn't need to know your name. Or he wants to know your mother's name. Or he wants to have, do you have a picture or, or, or of your sister or your wife or something? These are indications that the person, a'udhu billah, may be a magician. As using the name is one of the things they do in uh, seeking the jinn that they use to go put the magic on the individual. Sometimes the magician requests the jinn that me and you can't see to go to Oklahoma, go to Saudi Arabia, go to Egypt, go to Baghdad, go to any place and jump in this person. And remember the jinn are part of this whole Spring an economy full of technology. How do you think we can do all of these things with the touch of a button all over the world in, in seconds? Because this is the information that has been brought back by the jinn. As many of the ulama, like our Sheikh Muhammad Sa'id Rislan, Hafizahullah of Egypt, have talked about and have made this issue clear. So yes, it's easy for them to go and make some problem, jump inside of the lady, and now the lady's acting weird. Maybe she's making faces. Maybe she has a mood swing. Maybe she jumps in, that gen female jumps inside of a man. She's in love with the man. She doesn't want to depart from the man. And now the man, Allah Musta'an, he's always upset. And I don't mean sometime legitimately or illegitimately. Always upset. He doesn't even know why. Locked in the room. Doesn't want to eat. Never smiles when he used to be the most smiling individual before. When he used to be the most social, so, so sociable and outgoing from the people before. Know that this is an issue of magic. Wallahu musta'an. 
and the issue goes on and on and on. And from among some of the protection that a person can use is dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he or she depends on Allah by obeying Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala. By asking Allah constantly to protect you from these evils. By engrossing yourself and istighfar. By saying, astaq for Allah. Astaq for Allah. As much as you can. By avoiding the things that aid you and aid the jinn. And this evil issue of magic and being possessed. Such as music and excessive movies. And now people say, well, I'm American and this is what we grow up on. That has nothing to do with it. Most of what's in that movie, whether it be cable or local, kufr and shirk. Most of it, music nudity. Most of it, drinking, cussing, profanity, lies, etc. That which primes the heart for individuals to come, such as the soothsayers and the jinn and wicked people that want to harm you by way of this magic. nam. <laughs> Staying in purification, staying in wudu is another issue that protects you from these things. As these jinn and these people that are involved in this magic, they do not like the issue of purity. They do not like cleanliness. Naam. Wa haqada tilawatul Qur'an. If you can read the Qur'an. Read the Qur'an. Don't abandon the Qur'an. Don't find time for everything else but the Qur'an. And if you can't read the Qur'an, you can only read translation. Then play the Qur'an in your house. The Arabic version along with translation suffices. Or the Arabic, which is Qur'an by itself, play it. Read the English translation. Protect yourself from the likes of these issues by seeking assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by staying away from disobedience and the evil people, the people of Ma'asi, and most of all, make sure you stay away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you of the issue of sihr and all of his manifestations. O Allah, we ask you for your protection on this day from sihr and all of his manifestations. O Allah, we ask you protection from the evil, the wicked of that which you have created out of your wisdom and your knowledge. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you choose to test from your servants with that of that evil that we have mentioned, then raise from him or her or them quickly with the recovery of the Quran and the legislative ways of healing. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in you. We believe in your messenger. We believe in your book. And from your book and your messenger is the issue of sihru, that which is haram. We ask you to protect us from it. Every type of evil. Ma dhahara minha wa ma batan. That which is open and secret. Innahu jawad and kareem. Innahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Verily he has power to do all things. Verily he is the mighty. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakal al nabi Muhammad. Muhammad wa aqimu salat Allahu akbar Allahu akbar ashhadu an la ilaha illa